what is up everybody you probably noticed maybe you didn't but i didn't upload a video yesterday the reason being i didn't think there was enough news to justify a video and the day before i'm sure a lot of you have seen i was probably stretching for a topic and i i spoke about the homegrown rule and stuff like that and that video pretty much died on its backside which is okay i understand that but today i do have a few bits and pieces to speak about i'll be talking about jude bellingham i'll be talking about calvin phillips move to manchester city uh, i'll be talking about nico williams and a few other bits and pieces before i do so let me just start the clock there we go don't forget my friends do drop a like on the video hit that subscribe button and of course i would love to know your thoughts and anything to speak about in the comment section right i want to tease you a little bit so i'm not going to go in on jude bellingham just yet we'll start off with nico williams so all of us knew that nico was probably going to move on this summer uh fulham seemed to have been the favorites for his signature but now it looks like he's very close to agreeing a deal to move to nottingham forest who of course came up via the playoffs uh the steve cooper revolution with Jed Spence maybe going to make his way to Spurs or elsewhere, I think it's a good move. It's a good move for Nico, and I wish him nothing but the best. Uh, Steve Cooper is a very good coach. It will be Premier League football for him. Liverpool will receive a fee around £15 million, maybe a little bit more with a few add-ons. But ultimately, Nico just wants to play football. 21 years of age, with a World Cup coming up. I can't blame him. Wish him nothing but the best. I will be sad to see him go, because I, I genuinely think in any other era... If we didn't have Trent Alexander-Arnold, he probably would have got more game time than he would if he stayed here at Liverpool. And of course, we've since signed uh, Calvin Ramsey, which I will move on to speak about in a little bit as well. Uh, right, so on Calvin Phillips, and it's, there's so many Calvins around these days, I'm struggling to remember who's who. So Calvin Phillips, Manchester City look like they have agreed a fee somewhere between 45 rising to £50 million pound, uh, for the England international midfielder from, of course, Leeds United. Uh, he will be brought in to provide competition for Rodri. And look, all in all, it's a solid signing. It's not a signing that I think anybody should get overly excited about. I mean, somebody said to me as an example on our live stream earlier on, should Liverpool look to push through a move for Jude Bellingham now because Phillips was going to City? We always knew Phillips was going to go to City. I told you guys three, four weeks ago that City's two big top targets outside of obviously Alvarez and bringing in Erling Haaland were Calvin Phillips uh, and Kukurea from Brighton. Fully expect both of those players to uh, to arrive and join Pep Guardiola's side. It's, it's, it's worrying from the point of view of they, they're going to start to build up even more quality in every position. Like Rodri is an unbelievably good CDM um, and has really fitted in well for that Manchester City team. I'm not as worried about Phillips. I know a lot of people think he's a really good footballer. I think he's okay. I'm not somebody who, he's not striking fear into me that signing for Manchester City, but it will give them great cover, obviously with Fernandinho uh, getting older and older and Gundogan potentially moving on in a year's time. I think it's it's not a bad signing for Manchester City. The fee, you're always going to pay a little bit extra for a homegrown player because you've got to have the homegrown quota, as I spoke about the other day. So, yeah, look, for that one, it is what it is. Um, time will tell if he's a success or not at Manchester City. So, this brings me to Jude Bellingham, the title of this video and probably the reason why you're here to either tell me I'm deluded or you're here to say, not again, Craig, not again. I know, I'm trying to keep my Jude Bellingham propaganda to a minimum. But many people have started to report about Liverpool's interest, not least Fabrizio Romano, who the other day spoke, I can't remember if it was on like a German podcast or a German article that he wrote or was doing the Q&A on, but he let it be known again that Liverpool are very interested in signing Jude Bellingham next summer. I don't think anybody would be able to get Bellingham out of Dortmund this summer because he's already committed to the club and to the fans that he's staying there. Um, and there probably will be competition. Real Madrid is our name that have been rumoured to be interested in Bellingham. Uh, I suppose they're looking to refresh their midfield, aren't they? That uh, Casemiro, Modric, Tony Cruz midfield in a year's time. Modric will probably move on. I can't remember if Cruz has signed a new deal or not, but ultimately they've got Arlene Schumeni in there. Um, they've obviously got Camavinga as well. And if they could get you Bellingham in... That would be a daunting midfield for many, many seasons to come. But I don't think Jude Bellingham wants to go to Spain, at least not at this point in his career. I've been told otherwise. I've been told he wants to move back to the Premier League, not just to a Premier League, but he wants to move back to a particular club in the Premier League, us. And that's why I'm so confident about this. So I know people are also worried that Manchester City could throw their hat in the ring for Jude Bellingham, and that is entirely possible. And I, the next thing I'm going to say, I don't have anything to prove it. It's just my gut feeling. 
I don't think Bellingham is a good fit. I don't think Bellingham will see Manchester City as a good fit. I think he's destined to be Liverpool's Steven Gerrard-esque type midfielder for the next... And look, I know saying Steven Gerrard-esque is a big, big thing to say, but that's how highly I rate Bellingham. And I think he's going to be that eight that we need. And by eight, I mean that box-to-box midfielder. You know, we've seen Jurgen Klopp speak about the attributes or we've seen the reports of the attributes that Jurgen Klopp wants in a midfielder. Box-to-box, young, dynamic, tenacious. Pretty... You can see, again, why we were interested in Shoemeni, but it will be Bellingham. I fully believe he will be a Liverpool player next summer. And there's been some stuff as well worrying about his wages. Now, what I would say to any club who was about to sign Jude Bellingham is... You're signing a guy next summer who will be, what, 19 years of age. There's plenty of time for him to earn the mega, mega bucks in his career. So if he came into Liverpool, I don't think in his initial contract, Liverpool would have to worry about breaking a wage structure or anything like that. I'm sure he can command a hefty wage. And I'm sure there are others who will be able to offer him a far higher wage than perhaps we will. But again, I would say Jude Bellingham seems like somebody who has his head massively screwed on, who has his career mapped out. Um, made that very brave decision to go from the comforts of England with Birmingham, where he could have gone to Manchester United as well. But he went over to Dortmund, a great club in a good league, and he has shone over there and shown that he is the real deal. So I think he's destined to come to Liverpool Football Club and be part of uh, Jurgen Klopp's second great team. And I think the fact that Jurgen Klopp signed that extension is going to be a very good thing in this because, you know, if a player was coming in and Klopp only had a year to go, it's much more difficult to sell the player on your project or on your beliefs. But Jurgen Klopp is going to be here, as we know, till 2026 minimum. So, you know, let me know what you think. I know you all think I'm deluded. I know there are going to be questions talking about the transfer fee and his wages and all that kind of stuff. And I know I can't tell you exactly what I've been told, but I don't really put my nuts on the line too often. But for this one, I genuinely think that Jude Bellingham is going to be a Liverpool player. No matter who comes in for him, I think that the groundwork has been done. And, you know, these transfers, when you're speaking about somebody like Bellingham or any of the top players, it's not a transfer where you just say in in May time, let's make a move for Jude next month. These things have been spoken about, been monitored, agents have been, you know, sounded out. All this type of stuff takes a very, very long time because football transfers with the money involved are very complicated. Um, a few other bits and pieces as well with regards to Cuevin Kelleher. As I said to you the other day, Cuevin will be staying at Liverpool for the upcoming season. From a Liverpool perspective, very good. From Cuevin's own career perspective, a difficult one because Gaffin Bazunu just signed for Southampton. He's going to get regular football. He's going to be in Stephen Kenny's mind, obviously, uh, ahead of the more Nations League games and the qualifiers for the next Euro. So we'll wait and see what happens. But personally, I'm delighted to have Cuevin at the club because I rate him very highly. Uh, we're still waiting on news about exactly what will happen with Nat Phillips. Is he going to go to Bournemouth on loan for another season? Will he be kept at Liverpool or will he perhaps be sold? Oxley chamberlain as I said before, looks likely he's going to stay. And just thinking of other moves around the Premier League as well. I think Arsenal have done some tidy business and are doing some tidy business. So Gabriel Jesus is somebody who they're looking to get in. And you know what? I think he'd be a very, very good signing for Arsenal Football Club. Um... I don't think it's fair to say he didn't work out at Manchester City. I think he's been a bit unlucky about the way Guardiola's wanted to play. But I think at a club like Arsenal, he could really find his rhythm uh, and you know replace Alexander Lacazette, who of course has moved on, but do so more effectively. Uh, I, I do rate him. Uh, also, they brought in Vieira, we spoke about. Uh, Everton have been linked with a move for Gini Wijnaldum. I don't know how you guys would feel about that. I think they've also been linked with uh, Adrian Rabio. But for, for Gini... I mean, look, I, I love Genie. Didn't want him to leave, but if he went to Everton, folks, oh, if he went to Everton, that would, uh, I'd have to say that would be it for me, yeah. I mean, I know he left Liverpool perhaps not the happiest, but I, I just think his level is above Everton. Even at this point after a disappointing career with PSG, or season, I should say, with PSG, I just think he's way above Everton. I think there are far better clubs for him to take a look at. Um, another transfer news around the Premier League, Nick Pope has joined Bur- or Newcastle United with uh, 10 million. They're going to pay Burnley for him. And I think that's a steal. 
I really rate Nick Pope. I, I said on our stream the other day, I think Nick Pope is the best of all the English goalkeepers that are currently there. I know Pickford's England's number one, but I think this is a very good move for Pope. Joining Newcastle at the right time, right point in his career. And um, I wish him I wish him all the best. I do. I think Nick Pope is an excellent goalkeeper. Uh, other than that, I think the big news around Christian Eriksen is they're waiting to decide whether Christian Eriksen will stay with Brentford or whether he will join Manchester United. Um, if I was advising him, and this isn't my dislike of United, I'd say just, just stick with Brentford. You know, Brentford are the ones who, who gave him the pathway back into football. He will get as many minutes as he needs there as he looks to, you know, get himself ready for uh, international football with Denmark and for the World Cup. So I think Ericsson, I don't know, where's he going to go? Let us know, folks. Again, comment on anything I've spoken about tonight. Bye-bye.